Hi, I'm Josh Bloom. Welcome to another video in the RSP Supply Education Series. If you find that these videos are helpful to you, it certainly helps us out if you could give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. In today's video, we will move on to the next step in building an industrial control panel. If you haven't already seen the other videos in this series, we encourage you to go back and watch from the beginning so that you might better understand the entire process. The step in which we will focus on today is continuing on in the wiring phase of the build, but focusing on wiring the digital inputs and outputs for our control panel. And now that we have wired all of the power distribution throughout the panel, we can begin to wire some of the I.O., which is where all of the external devices and instruments will be wired into. When wiring I.O. in a panel, it is easy to make the mistake due to the fact that there can be so many termination points. So it is important to follow your schematics and take your time. As always, the process in which we discuss today is just one method of many that can be performed to achieve the very same results. So let's get to it. When wiring digital signals, it's important to understand that depending on the hardware that is actually being used, you may wire it differently. So in some cases, a PLC will come with a pre-wired wire harness that you will use on the PLC side of your digital signals. In the case of the panel that we're building, this is actually what is the case. Uh, this particular PLC has a harness that we plug into the PLC and we only wire the terminal block side of this particular signal uh, in our cabinet. Now some other um, PLCs don't offer this and so you have to wire both the PLC side as well as the terminal block side. So for the case of this particular unit, we're going to be wiring uh, these digital signals just on the terminal block side. In another video, we'll show you how to wire uh, the PLC, this particular PLC in any case, just so that you can get an idea how you might wire this type of PLC. But keep in mind, depending on the hardware that you have, will greatly dictate how you wire your signals. Um, the next thing you want to consider when wiring digital signals is the wire size. We've talked about this a lot throughout this panel build. Now, when you're doing signals, we're not typically seeing as much current pass through these signals. We can use smaller wire. Um, normally, when there is no pre-wired harness provided, we try to use a 16 or 18 gauge wire, which is probably more than necessary, but we like to try to use as large of wire as possible just, just to be safe. Uh, in the case of these pre-wired harnesses that we're using for this particular build, they're going to be either a 22 or a 24 gauge wire. So pretty small, but again, the amount of current that is passing through these signal wires is really, really minimal. These are factory wire harnesses, so there's really no concern for too much current passing through and burning up the insulation and causing any kind of hazard. So again, make sure that your signal wires are sized between somewhere between 16 and 24 gauge wire. It's also important to make sure that we're reading the PLC manual, the hardware manual, so that we can very clearly understand how to wire um, these digital circuits. Uh, each PLC functions a little bit differently, so uh, they're not all wired the same. So we want to make sure that we understand how the circuit um, should be wired so that we can make sure that we have, uh, we're wiring a proper loop. So we need to make sure that we're, we're putting um, we're putting our power where it needs to go and that we're putting neutral or DC negative where it needs to go so that we ensure that we have a, a, a proper uh, loop so that our signals uh, can function and get back to our PLC as expected. It's also a good idea to have some kind of a disconnect or fuse protection on each individual signal so that we can isolate each signal if necessary. Now this is a good idea so that if in the field we need to replace or um, service an instrument or device in the field, we can isolate the power going out to that instrument. And again, that's probably going to be very little power, but we still want to be able to isolate that. So by being able to remove a, move a fuse or lift up a disconnect, we can isolate that device or instrument so that we can service it or replace it. So being able to have that kind of protection is a good idea. It also protects the PLC from possible surges or overcurrent events so that the PLC doesn't see that uh, that spike 
uh, and it protects that hardware as well. So it's a really good idea to again have a fuse protection or some kind of disconnect. But the fuse protection is, is the preferred method to offer optimal protection. Uh, we also want to make sure that as we're terminating each of our digital signals, again, that we don't fray or birdcage the wire in any way so that we can avoid any potential hazards or short circuits. Uh, we also want to make sure that if we're using any jumpers to distribute power uh, or distribute our neutral uh, throughout our terminal block bus, um, that we make sure that uh, we secure those jumpers in place properly. If they are being ins inserted into um, terminal points, that we make sure that we uh, properly torque each of those terminal points, just depending on the type of jumper that you're actually using. And lastly, we want to make sure, as always, that we're referencing our drawings as often as, uh, as possible throughout this process, that we're not missing any details, and that we can make sure that each of our signal wires is in fact being wired correctly. If we do all this, we can be confident that we've wired all of our digital signals correctly and we can move on to the next step. As you can see, due to the amount of terminations that need to be made during this step, it is important to go slowly and make sure that nothing is missed. If a mistake is made during this step, it can be very difficult to diagnose that problem later on. As always, we appreciate your interest and participation in this series and hope you continue to join us throughout the remainder of the build process. In our next video, we will move on to the wiring of the analog inputs and outputs in our control panel. So make sure to join us next time as we continue the build. For a full line of industrial control panel hardware and thousands of other products, please go to our website. For more information or other educational videos, go to rspsupply.com, the internet's top source for industrial hardware. Also, don't forget, like and subscribe.